We get mad with God. Why don't we get mad with the devil? Why don't we get mad with Satan when things don't go right? Why don't we rebuke the devil? Why don't we bind him up and send him back to the pit? Why don't we get mad with him? You're now tuned into the world of Kingdom Vision Christian Center with Pastor Kevin Brown. Equipping and empowering God's people as instruments of righteousness. Where your freedom in Christ makes the difference in your life. Now for today's message. Now, we're going to pick up from where we left off last week. What was last week's message? Speak up. Say it again. One more time. Freedom from the standpoint of righteousness. Part two. Freedom from the standpoint of what? Part two. We are the righteousness of God. Amen. Are you the righteousness of God? Amen. Raise your hand if you are the righteousness of God. Amen. We, are. we are. We're not going to be. Today, right now, tomorrow, and in the future, we are and will be the righteousness of God. Now, this is imperative that you believe this truth. You got, it's imperative that you come into agreement with it and you really mean it and believe it from your heart. Righteousness is not only a position, it's a condition. Just like we talked about, remember we talked about on, um, I think, Wednesday night. We're here overtime Wednesday night. Hallelujah. I repent. Forgive me. I just want you to know, Pastor got a time clock now. See in the back right there? See in the back? Pastor got a time clock. I follow the clock now. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Go get God raised. I know you're like that. I know you're like that. <laughs> I got a time clock. That's going to help me. Hallelujah. That's going to help the pastor. All right? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now. The Bible says, righteousness exalteth a nation. Righteousness exalteth a nation. Righteousness exalteth a nation. Sin is a reproach unto any people. Righteousness exalteth what? A nation. Am I right? That's what the Bible says. Righteousness, let's look at that right quick. Let's look at Proverbs <clears throat> Whew. 14. Turn to Proverbs 14. Let's look at this. Proverbs what? And verse 34. When you get it, say amen. amen. Now you better hurry up because you're on my time now. Yeah. Take forever to turn those scriptures now. I only got 47 minutes. 47 minutes left now. So yo, yo, come on. <laughs> you got it? Now the Bible says, I didn't say this, but in the book of Proverbs it says righteousness, what does what? Exalt, Exalt a nation. Exalt a what? A nation. It lifts a nation up. But it says, sin is a reproach to what? Any people. You see that there? Yeah. Now, the reason why this is so important. <laughs> because righteousness keeps the enemy out. You do. Righteousness, not just the position of righteousness, but righteous living. Exalts a nation. 
exalted people. Do you understand what I'm saying? But it says, but sin is a reproach to any people. Sin opens a door. Sin is the enemy's way into your life. It's not God's way in. God's way in is through righteousness, right? Faith in him, right? Which brings what? Righteousness. So I'm trying to get people to understand that God is not your enemy. God is not our enemy. God is not against us. Amen. Can I get a better amen than that, y'all? All right, make sure you understand. I, got, I know you're listening. I know you're listening. But I want, you know, I want to make sure you're following me here. I want you to make sure you're in agreement with me here. Amen. That God is not your enemy. Amen. God, did, God did all of this. God gave his son so that you would no longer be an enemy of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, before his son, we were all enemies of God. But after the son, we're no longer enemies of God to those of us who receive Jesus Christ as our Lord. Amen. See, are you listening to me? And our faith, listen to this, our faith is in the saving work and deliverance work of Jesus Christ. You follow me? Amen. What is our faith in? Our faith is in the saving work, the delivering work. The Bible talk calls it redemption. Say redemption. Redemption, redemption is deliverance. Say deliverance. deliverance. Deliverance is freedom. Say freedom. Freedom, freedom from what? From sin. from sin. From a sinful condition. You follow what I'm saying? Why is this so important? So people know why they're being, what they're being saved from. Because right believing will equal right what? Living. Right believing will equal right receiving will equal right living. Amen. So, yes, you know, we, 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 we stress this point. Many people stress this point. Well, God died to save us from hell. Well, that's not wrong. But it's not completely right. Amen. God really came to save us from ourselves. I'm going to say that one more time. God really came to save us from ourselves. That will result in hell. God changes your condition so hell won't ever be a factor. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Hell is, hell is no longer an issue with, for the believer. Because hell, hell was never intended for, for mankind. Did you hear what I'm saying? Are you hearing me good? Hell was never intended for us. You listening? Amen. It was intended for Satan and the falling angels. That's right. But in the book of Isaiah, I think it's 54 and 14, it says, Hell has enlarged herself right to include man also yeah. because man became rebellious toward God. Became God's enemy. You understand? Yeah. Now, God switches that thing around for us through our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, because all men were destined to hell. Right. That was the judgment. You follow me? Yeah. All that was changed Hallelujah. because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Yeah. So listen to me. So listen to me. So listen to me. So now I understand what this saving faith is all about. Saving faith is about putting my trust in Jesus Christ yes. for the redemption of mankind. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So why is this so important? Because most people believe the most people believe something, but they don't believe the right thing. Amen. Most people believe that Jesus Christ died for their sin, but they don't believe that they've been freed from their sin. You have to believe that God has freed you, listen to me, from the sin, from the sin nature, from the sin nature. Say sin nature. Right. God has delivered you from the sin nature so that you're no longer in bondage to it. That's why when you look at the world as a whole, 
the world as a whole is in bondage to the sin nature. You understand what I'm saying? Sin brings a reproach to any people. You understand? But the righteous are in that. But listen to me. But the righteous are still here. I said the righteous are still here. The righteous exalt a nation, a people. You follow, you follow me? So <laughs> we must understand that we are that righteousness. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now, allowing righteousness, listen to me, allowing righteousness to, to, to be in the forefront, to be the, to be the power that works in our lives, righteousness. You understand what I'm saying? Now, let's look at <clears throat> let's look at Proverbs chapter 2. Since we're still there, go to Proverbs chapter 2. Let's look at this right quick. Proverbs 2. Proverbs chapter 2, when you get to say amen. amen. And let's look at verse, mm, verse 7. 2 and verse 7. He, he layeth up sound wisdom for the what? Righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. You see that there? He is a what? He is a buckler that walk what? Uprightly. Up what? Uprightly. Uprightly. So he's not just talking about a position. You see what I'm saying? He's not just talking about a position of righteousness. See, positionally speaking, we are all righteous, positionally. Amen, amen. Come on now. Listen, I'm saying now. Positionally speaking, we are all righteous. But if you believe that, if you truly believe that, then righteousness begins to act in your life. Amen. It begins to manifest. Your, whatever you believe begins to manifest in your life. You understand what I'm saying? Now, you know, we're speaking, we're speaking specifically about the word of God. So when we receive the righteousness of God, positionally speaking, we go from being in that position to operating in that condition. You understand what I'm saying? So now, yes, we are, we are righteous. I declare myself to be righteous because Christ made me righteous. Yeah. Positionally speaking, I believe I am righteous. Well, if you believe that you are, guess what? Righteousness will begin to reign in your life. Yeah. That's right. You can clap right there. Hallelujah. I said righteousness will begin to reign yeah. through your life. You see? So now he says, as righteousness begins to reign, it begins to manifest. In other words, people begin to see it. They begin to see the righteousness of God manifesting in your physical being. You see what I'm saying? So it's played out in right acts. In other words, right action. You understand what I'm saying? Righteousness will equal right action. You follow me? Why is this so important? Because right action keeps Satan out of your life. Right action keeps the door closed. Who opens the door? You do. Stop blaming that stuff on God. God don't have anything to do with that foolish stuff that's going on in your life. Do you hear what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? God, listen to me. All God wants for you is good. That's it. That's all God wants for you is good. He proved that by giving us his son. He gave us the best thing he had. There's nothing else God can give you. Do you follow, are, you following, are you following the man of God this morning? So stop thinking God is against you and God is doing evil to you. God is not doing evil to you. We, have, we, do, have one that, we do have one that wants to do evil. 
towards you. That's St. John's 10 and 10. Write that down, St. John's 10 10. Just write it down. St. John's 10 10 says, The thief cometh. It didn't say, The Lord cometh. It said, The thief cometh. Who is the thief? Who is the thief? Who is the thief? In the book of St. John 10.10, 10, it says, The thief cometh. Come on now. Can I tell you something? It never said the Lord cometh. The Bible says the thief cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Who cometh? The thief. The thief comes. He comes to steal your life. Huh? He comes to take your health. God gave me a revelation on that one. God gave me a revelation on that one. Mm -hmm. Satan can't take what God didn't give you. So when your body's up against a fight, when your body's up against a fight with sickness, what he's actually trying to do is take what God has given you. What did God give you? Health. 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 Healing. Yeah. Are you listening to what I'm saying? That, that bears witness with the truth. He says, by his stripes, you were healed in 1 Peter. That's right. yeah. He says, you're going to be healed. He says in 1 Peter 2 and 24, by his stripes, you were healed. Yeah. So everything that, everything that God is going to do, he has already done through his son. That's right. It's just a matter of whether or not you know it. It's a matter of whether or not you have the knowledge of the truth. Well, he said in the book of Hosea 6 and 4, or 4 and 6, you know the deal. My people are what? Destroyed. My people are what? Destroyed. Whose people? people. He's, he was specific. He says, my people are destroyed. So God's people can be destroyed? Yes. Is God the one destroying them? No. This is what I'm trying to get you to understand. God is not against you. God is not against us. But the first person we look at when something goes wrong is God. First person we want to blame is God because things don't go right. We want to blame God. You're blaming the wrong one. That's right. Glory. I'm. I'm <laughs> Oh, Lord. He says, verse 7, He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk what? Right. Now, so the result of being righteous by faith. I'm righteous by faith. Okay, listen to me. You are righteous by faith and faith alone. That's what he told Abraham. The Bible says that God could not credit Abraham. He could not credit Abraham for the law because he couldn't be made righteous by the law. Right. And as a matter of fact, there was no law at that time for him to be made righteous by. Amen. But God, the Bible says that God credited him righteousness because he believed. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? God credits you with righteousness because you believe. Amen. Now, Righteousness, righteousness is so dynamic and powerful that it begins to work in your life. Yes, righteousness. Righteousness is not just a word. It's not just a position. It's a condition. Are you hear what I'm saying? And this condition begins to work in your life through faith. <laughs> so listen to me. The more I believe that I am righteous, the more my actions will display that truth. It's, it's, it's righteousness working through me. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not my righteousness. It's his righteousness. But that righteousness is, is alive. Because you know why it's alive? Because righteousness is equivalent to life. You can't... You can't you can't receive the righteousness of God and not receive the life of God. Amen. Do you hear what I said? You, do you hear? So, if you receive the life of God, that means you have the new nature. 
That means you are the righteousness of God. Amen. Positionally speaking, and the, the dynamics of righteousness begins to prevail yes. Yes. in your life. That's, right. that's why, listen to me, that's why the Lord, showed it, the Lord showed it to me this way when I was thinking about it. Righteousness does not mean that we are without sin. Listen what I'm saying now. I'm going somewhere. This is what God showed me. But righteousness is so dynamic that it covers sin up. In other words, I got to get so close to you to see it. I got to get so close to you to see sin. I got to use a magnifying glass. That's how powerful righteousness is. Because righteousness begins to deliver you from sin. Yes, sir. So it, 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 it almost looks like you're sinless, but you're not. <laughs> Righteousness begins to prevail so much in your life that sin, cannot even, sin can barely be seen. I'm t- you know, that's what I'm saying. See why? Because the Bible doesn't teach. The Bible doesn't teach us that we will live a lifestyle completely free from sin. It doesn't teach that. But what the Bible does teach is that we're no longer, we will no longer be dominated by it. Do you, do you, do you hear what I'm saying? Righteousness will begin to dominate. Are you listening to what I'm saying? See, with sinners... With sinners, sin dominates their lives. And you can see it. But just because, listen to me, when God saved you and delivered you, he didn't make you sinless. But righteousness is so dominant that you can't see sin. (laughs) Right. I'm not, can I tell you something? I'm not sinless. But that's not what you see from me. Come on now. What you see is righteousness. Why? Yes. Because it dominates my life. Yes. Yes. Oh, y'all ain't listening to me. Y'all don't listen to me. You got, in other words, if I sin in my life, you got to look real close. You got to stay there for a long time. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because righteousness is now dominating my life. Righteousness should be dominating your life. The longer you stay with the Lord, the more you grow in righteousness and being established in it, you can barely see sin in the person. You think they're perfect. Right, right. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. That's not of the person, that's of God. You see, are you listening to what I'm saying? That's, that, that's called maturity. That's called spiritual maturity. <laughs> are you hearing me? Are you hearing me this morning, son? Okay, now listen to this. Let's go to. We, we, we just read two and seven, right? Now let's, 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 let me finish this up, the second part. He is a buckler to them that what? To them that what? Now listen to this. Now here's where you, here's where you get. You got to remember, it starts out by faith. Righteousness is yours by faith. So positionally speaking, you are righteous in the eyes of God. But God, God wants to protect you. As his child, he wants to protect you while you are in this world. And the only way he can do that is by getting you to establish, to, he wants to establish you in his righteousness. You understand? Because God understands that continuing Continuing in sin will open up a door to, to the enemy, not to God. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. So you're a saint, you're, a right, you're the righteous of God, but you're still, living, you're still living, living a lifestyle that's beneath that righteousness. So what you begin to do, you begin to give way to, to the enemy. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And you can't be protected that way because you yourself are opening the door. Yes. Amen. That's right. 
That's why the Bible says, give no place to the devil. Give no place to him in your life. Not God. When talking about God, <laughs> the Bible doesn't protect us from God. <laughs> but that's what, that's what some of us think. Every time something wrong, something go bad, first one we won't blame is God. Like God is, God is, God is doing that fault for what happened to you. You're blaming the wrong one. We get mad with God. Why don't we get mad with the devil? Why don't we get mad with Satan when things don't go right? Why don't we rebuke the devil? Why don't we bind him up and send him back to the pit? Why don't we get mad with him? When I see, let me say, when I see people going off and getting off, I don't get mad with them, I get mad with the devil. I get mad with the enemy. That's why I preach so hard. That's why I teach so hard. You know why? Because I'm mad with the devil. I'm not mad with God. Now, why, why I'm, a, I'm on this very hard because I want to show you something. The Lord showed me. He is a buckler, verse 7. The, part, the, the second part of verse 7 says, he is a buckler. What does that mean? Buckler. A seal. He is a seal to them who do what? Amen. Not just to the righteous. Amen. Amen. Not with just those who say I'm positionally right with God. That's true. But if you are positionally right with God, it should play out in your life. Yes. You can't say I'm positionally right with God to be a homosexual. You can't say, I am positionally right with God and live a lifestyle like a lesbian. Come on, come on, Jesus. Why? Because that opens a door. That opens a door to wickedness. You can't say, I'm the righteous of God and you live a lifestyle of, of a fornicator and an adulteress and an adulterer. But you're saying, I am the righteousness of God? Well, if you are the righteousness of God, righteousness tells you that the, the dynamics of God's righteousness, his power of righteousness will convict you of sin. So that you'll get out of that. Righteousness don't let you stay, listen, righteousness don't let you be comfortable in sin. Not righteousness. Not the righteousness of God. You have just heard from the world of Kingdom Vision Christian Center with Pastor Kevin Brown, located at 1945 East Ferry Road in Charleston. You can also visit us at www.kvchristiancenter.com and like us on Facebook. Remember, your freedom in Christ makes a difference in life.